Welcome back to Paper Crafting with Tracy. Today I'm going to show you how to use this new Enduring Beauty stamp set that's found in the mini catalog from January, uh, that started January. And what's unique about this set is it comes with a set of decorative masks called the Enduring Beauty, Beauty Decorative Masks to help you color them in. Okay, now it looks kind of complicated. You can see that I've been using them, but once I show you how easy this is and the potential for this, um, I just love this set. So what we're gonna start with is a piece of white cardstock. And the stamp, as you can see, is quite large. So I'm gonna take some basic gray And whenever you have a stamp that is larger than your ink pad, it's easier if you apply the ink to the stamp set, or the stamp, rather than putting the stamp on the ink pad itself. You just have a bit more control with evening out your ink on it and making sure it's all inked up. Just like that. I will get it all kind of centered how I want it, apply some nice even pressure. Now something I don't know if you're aware of, when you're using these photopolymer stamps, you should get a piece of foam or something underneath. It will help you get a better application of your ink. Now unfortunately the table I'm using, I'm just going to slide everything over. I've got a crease in the table here. I've got a temporary craft room here, and it's actually in my RV. So there we go. And I can see it wasn't 100% perfect there in the center, and that was probably because of this fold in the center. But that's okay, because that's not going to show. So now the nice thing with these decorative masks, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, is one, they've all got this little notch in them. If you can see that there. And that so that you know um, that you've got them all held in the same direction. And then each one, I'll see if I can make it so you can, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that there in the light? It's numbered. So I'm going to start with this first one here. And the first one's always a little bit of a challenge just to you can get it. And that's, that's why they're, I didn't realize they were numbered the first time I went to use these. And it was a bit more challenging. But if you start with this one as the number one, you'll see that it matches up with the flowers quite nicely. So you just get that in place. And I'm going to do something different. On the other one, I used Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. This time I'm going to use some Flirty Flamingo. And I'm going to use um, some of our blending brushes. You have your choice of both the a small one and a big one. Uh, one that was closest I'd already had going was a small one. So, And just kind of hold your mask down where you want it. And I always start blending off a little bit and then start coming across because you can always add color but you can't take the color away. And then by starting off the mat too or off the, the paper, it stops you from getting that really dark sudden spot there all of a sudden. And it also helps with the brush strokes that sometimes happen if you've got too much ink on there. When I do this, you might notice I've got some different shading, some a little bit darker. I like that because, I mean, flowers aren't completely uniform, right? Um, it might be that something's in a little bit of shade or more sunlight, that sort of thing. Okay, and so when we take that off, you can see just the flowers were, were done. So that's the end of that color. The next one, number two here. So again, you start, I had, knew I had the notch in this corner. So now you're going to line it up. And see how much easier that is once you know which direction 
this little notch was because all the notches will be on the same side. So I'm going to use some old olive for this one to color my leaves. And again, some are a little darker than others, and I'm okay with that. There we go. Okay, number three, okay, is this one here. And again, I get that notch down in the corner, and this is gonna give our accents to the flowers. So get your ink pad out of the way, and then I'm gonna use uh, Melon Mambo this time. So we'll just line this up. Now what's a little tricky with this one is, remember it's just accent colors. So it's not going to line up on the edges, the outer edges of the flowers. But if you look here, you've got some of the inner flower there. So if you line it up with that one there, I'm hoping you can see that. And then you can just kind of angle it a little bit to get, see how it kind of all comes together like so. So again, this is a very strong color, so I will start off and I will start a little lighter. I'm just kind of coming across. Just kind of depends on the um, how, how dark they are. I did this in a class and we all used the same color you know, that I was teaching and they all turned out so different. Okay, so I'll just come over that nice. And when I'm dabbing on the ink pad, I'm not pushing hard. Because as I said earlier, you can always add, but you can't take away. There we go. So when I take that off, you can see the shading that happens in there. Hopefully that shows up really well there. Yeah, you can see them there. Okay, and now we're going to add the accents to the leaves. Oops. That didn't work well when I was trying to close it. I got it all over my fingernails. So let me just wipe that off. That'll work for now. Okay, so now this one again, I've got, and it's number four. So I'm gonna get them lined up with the, the leaves here. And I can see this part here will match with the edge of the flower. Cause it's trying to mask, of course, the flowers and the other thing that happens with this one for the dark is it tends to get all the little stems so that'll also help you with matching things up there we go that looks pretty good so I'm gonna use mossy meadow this time and I'm actually using the same green blending brush remember always start with your light color and then add your dark possibilities with this with the color combinations is just amazing I'm thinking doing some <clears throat> shades of red for Christmas this is kind of similar to the two-tone flora stamp set um, where you can add some depth with the accents it's just a different way of doing it so there if you can see those accents and now I will add the yellow. So I'm using crushed curry for this. And this is for the centers. And now you might be thinking, okay, if I look at the centers, I've already got color all over it. That's okay. This will just add a little bit more definition. Now what is a little bit confusing is where it looks like the center here will not match up perfectly with those. It's not supposed to. So what I do, as you can see, there's a little, can you see that a little bump? in the flower there and one there as well that's where I once I get them there I line them up with the the little bump where the little centers of the flowers are once I get those lined up then the others are just kind of approximate 
This is just giving some accent to the centers of the flowers. There we go. So you can just see some accent of the yellow in there. And that's all there is to that one. So you can see from that one little stamp what an effective inking technique that is. So I will just finish this card. I've got a piece of flirty flamingo that I will attach it to as soon as I figure out where I stuck my my tape. As I was, Oh, there it is. Um, when I was putting everything aside, I buried it. Oops, I just put a new tape in there. There we go. So I'd love it if, when you're uh, making this or doing some of these, if you share your color combinations uh, on my Facebook page, which is Paper Crafting with Tracy, and find the post for this one and share your combinations. The, the various colors are amazing. And then I have my basic white um, thick for my the base of my card. And you can see how you could f make a bunch of these cards very quickly. And it can be used for such a variety of sentiments. So I'm just going to punch out a piece of white cardstock here. Just, uh, I got a scrap piece here. I'll just take the oval punch and take the scalloped oval. That's all I want there with this oval punch. If you can see those. And I'm actually going to use a stamp set from the celebration that is occurring right now for January and February. Softly sophisticated. So if you, in Canada, if you spend $60 on product, you could get potentially this stamp set for free. So I'm going to use the You're In My Thoughts. <clears throat> and I'm probably going to use the Flirty Flamingo ink to put the sentiment on there. There we go. That'll work. But I'm not a fan of the, just the white on white, so I'm going to edge that. So I'll just take a, oops, I still needed that, a sponge dauber. I don't tend to use the blends for this because it's um, too finicky, and I'll just sponge around the edge of all the white, just to give it a little bit of definition when you apply it to the card. There we go. Stick that away. And I will get my dimensionals. Put a couple on there. And I think I'm going to put it in this, this side this time. And then in the catalog, there's also these brushed brass butterflies. So I'm going to take one of those. Just one of the little ones. Pick it up here. And I'm just going to stick it on the sentiment. And there you go. So that's with this Enduring Beauty stamp set and all the decorative masks. Okay. So there's a couple other ones. So I hope you enjoyed this edition with Paper Crafting with Tracy. Please subscribe to the channel and happy stamping.